Hi, Brandon. Scott Morgan Ross, South Florida Tribune. I saw you when you were in Miami when you were first starting out. Uh, good to see you again from Deerfield Beach. So tell me a little bit, Brandon, about your journey from Deerfield Beach High School to the Lions, where you're an undrafted free agent, to where you're at now. I mean, geez, oh, Pete, you can't take a better journey, let alone be reunited with the quarterback in Detroit. Uh, you know, it's been a long, tough journey. You uh, started out, you know, at obviously Deerfield Beach High School. You know, that was, you know, my dad, he played ball there. My cousins played ball. And then my whole family went there. So it was like, you know, that was a, you know, a big moment for me to start there and, you know, able to go to college, go to the University of Florida, you know, to play football there. I honestly never even thought about, you know, going to college because that was just something so, you know, far away that I didn't even – you know, think about being a 5'8", 150 pounds my whole high school career. It was just something that I never thought about. And then, you know, being fortunate enough to go to college and, you know, play four years at the University of Florida, one of the best schools in the world, have a great time there and then go undrafted. <clears throat> you know, wanted to be drafted, but, you know, I was just happy to, you know, have an opportunity to make it to the NFL and go to Detroit with Matthew Stafford you know, have, you know, be able to play as a rookie, you know, in the NFL, you know, go for a hundred yards. My first start with Matthew Stafford was like, that was like one of the, the moments I'll never forget in Lambeau Stadium, you know, playing with him, had like 96 yards in the fourth quarter. And he called himself, he called the play in which he threw me a little five yard out route and got me a hundred yards. And, you know, ever since then, you know, Matthew Stafford was one of my favorite players. Like I, even when I was in Atlanta, you know, I was always rooting for him in Detroit. You know, being able to come out here, you know, being in the L.A. Rams with him, you know, it's kind of, you know, it's surreal to me. And being able to hear him, you know, give me a shout out, you know, in that Minnesota game in the huddle. You know, that was like one of the one of the biggest moments for me of my career so far to have a, a player like Matthew Stafford, you know, to give you, you know, an acknowledgement like that. That was something that was like big for me. And it's, you know, just been a crazy process, you know, and I'm just trying to enjoy it all. And uh, that preseason game when you went out there and uh, ran for those couple of touchdowns in the rain, it got you a spot on there to begin with. It had to start somewhere. You caught somebody's attention. Then you ended up making the club anyway. So your story is great, but we can't leave out, obviously, one of the more important parts that you wowed a lot of people to earn that roster spot. I was there and saw the game. It was just uh, yeah. No, it was just, you know, being in, in Tampa, you know, I was in Detroit for a while at that time, and it was like I was homesick. You know, being a rookie, you know, being in the NFL, you know, it's kind of want to go back home, but you want to make a team. And being able to play in Florida at that time, you know, as my whole family was there, you know, their first game to watch me in the NFL. And, you know, just having the guys in, in, in Detroit rooting me on, you know, being able to go out there and play in my home in my home state, you know, that was a big game for me. My dad, my grandma, everybody got to see me, you know, score my first pump return in the, in the NFL. I mean, it didn't count because it's preseason, but – no, that was just a big moment for me, you know, and that helped me make the team in Detroit, which I'm, I'm very grateful for. Hey, Brandon, Justin Rogers from Detroit. Um, covered you that, that first year. Uh, good to see you again. Um, wow. Congratulations on this. And, and so uh, can, can you just capture, I mean, the moment you're in right now, I mean, you've, you've got a podium at the Super Bowl. Uh, it's been kind of a, I, I think a hectic year maybe is the best way to describe it between Miami, Buffalo, and, and here. So uh, maybe maybe just specifically focusing on on this year to this moment, what, what it's been like for you. Oh, man, if I could tell you, if I would probably take me a long time to explain, you know, every feeling I went through. But, you know, just starting out in Buffalo, you know, going there, thinking I have a good chance to make the team, you know, you know, you work your butt off in training camp and then, you know, you get cut from there. And I was home for a couple of days, got a call from Miami. You know, I'm I'm a Dolphins fan. I mean, I'm, I grew up in South Florida. I mean, my whole family root for the Dolphins. So it was like, you know, being a Dolphins fan, that was just something big, you know, being able to have, take a part in their, you know, their, their organization for those three weeks, you know, it was something big for me. But then, you know, got cut from them, was home for about a month. You know, I really didn't know what I was going to do. I thought my football career up was over with. And, you know, they say it, it only lasts like three years. And being that was my third year, you know, I went through a lot, you know, just thinking like, man, it's all over. You know, I'm not getting the calls. You know, I'm at home on the couch, you know, going fishing, not working, not playing football. I don't have a job outside of football. <clears throat> so it was like kind of, it was a tough moment for me, but 
you know, got a call from LA and, you know, got that call and I just never looked back. I just, you know, that feeling that I, that I had was sitting home for that month. You know, I never, that was like one of the worst feelings you know, I ever had. And it's just, you know, coming here, taking advantage of the opportunity. You know, I'm thankful that the Rams gave me the opportunity to go out here and play. And I'm thankful for my teammates for believing in me and, you know, going out there every Sunday to help our team make big plays on special teams and, you know, win games. And now we're in the Super Bowl. I mean, it's, it's a crazy, I don't even know how to explain. Everybody's asking me how, how does it feel? And it's like, man, I can't even explain. I probably could tell you on Sunday, I'll probably be crying my eyes out, you know, pregame. So, but, you know, I'm just trying to take it all in, take it day by day, you know, just, you know, try to treat it like a normal game, you know, just go out there and do, you know, do what I've always been doing all my life. And that's playing football. And and you said it there. I mean, guy, guys are trying to treat this like a normal week, like a normal game, but it's, it's not a normal game. It's a Super Bowl. Have you, have you envisioned just just what that opening kickoff kickoff's going to be like? Just waiting to feel that, you know, as oh, as the man. nation watches. Yeah, I mean, I you know, I'm really cool with Sony here, and I you know, talking to him about the feeling of the Super Bowl is like, you know, he can't really tell you. It's just you got to experience it for yourself. So it's like, you know, being a little kid, you know, you play Madden or whatever. You grow up watching the Super Bowl. You see all the cameras flash, and you know, the first kick return. And it's just like, man, I wish I could be, you know, in that position. I'll never forget. I was actually the Super Bowl when the Colts played the Bears. And, you know, Devin Hester took that like return back. I was actually in the stadium and up in the nosebleeds watching that. And it was like, man, now I get to sit here and be in the Super Bowl and play in the Super Bowl. And it's just like that was like a, you know, a soft topic right there for me. Just thinking, sitting there in the hotel, thinking about that it was like, man, it's like you, you can't really. How, how do you explain something like that? I guess you can't explain it unless you, you know, you're in those shoes. Scott, you can go ahead with your question. Yeah, okay. Once again, Brandon, I know that uh, th this is a pretty important contest uh, for you because of where you've come, but when you put in perspective about the magnitude of where you're at now, I mean, like you said, talk about the fact that you were once again uh, unemployed for a while and how much more hungrier that it made you feel to get to this point, knowing that your journey was a little bit extraordinary than most since you were an undrafted guy. Well, I mean, being an undrafted guy kind of prepared me for this, you know, this situation because, you know, you come in, you're undrafted, you know, I mean, I'll just keep it, you know, honest. Like being undrafted, they don't really, you're not really suspected to make the team. Nobody's really they're just, you're just basically another body there. And it's like, okay, if he, he's playing good, we'll, we'll give him a shot. And it's like, you know, it kind of prepared me being able to go through that my rookie year, being undrafted, you know, being a 5A guy, small guy in the league, you know, there's really no, not too many spots for a 5A guy. So it's like, just, you know, keeping your head down, you know, grinding it out, you know, just trying to find a way. And, you know, that's what, you know, this, that sitting home for that month, you know, just, I had time to look, just really sit back and just think about, you know, if I really want to play football, if I get another shot, what you got to do, like, just, you know, give it a, give it your all and whatever happens, happens. And that's really all I came to L.A., you know, just trying to do whatever the scout team, you know, special teams. Every time you touch the ball, it's like I'm trying to make a big play. I, I trust my teammates. They believe in me. I know they're going to they're busting their butts out there to, you know, get their blocks. And, you know, all I got to do is just do the easy job, what I've been doing all my life, catch the ball and run and that's what that's what we've been doing out here in LA and I'm just thankful for you know the opportunity you know just go through everything all the, the failures the success you know I'm just thankful for it all because it's you know it made me a better person and made me a better player hi Brandon I just wanted to ask if uh, Odell was a guy that was a maybe an influence on you as a young receiver um if that's the case what, what was it about him um and then maybe how, how that's you know, and for, for, furthermore now, what it's been like being a teammate of his. Uh, you know, it's just you, you're a fan of all of, you know, the, the players in the league that, you know, they make big plays. You see them all over TV. And, you know, you watch Odell, some of the stuff, like seeing them in person now, it's like, man, I, I won't even try that. That's just something you can do. And it's like, I'll say being with him, you know, having a player like that of that caliber, you know, come up to you and say, man, you're going to take one to the house or I need a big return from you. That just gives you extra motivation because it's like, man, this guy is Odell Beckham, you know, one of the, the best receivers in the game. And, you know, he's, you know, he believes in you. And it's like, man, I just give you an extra boost. Just go out there, man. Just put it all out there on the line for, for your teammates and just go make plays. And, you know, it's, 
it's been a great feeling to be on a team with him. You know, just having a player like that just supporting you is, you know, it's it's a great feeling. I didn't know if I heard you right when you were talking about being in the stands. Did you say that was at a Super Bowl you were in the, the nosebleeds? Yes, that, that Colts and the Bears game in Miami. How, how I mean, okay. how did you get into that one? I can't tell you. You know, it was Miami. You know, there is it's ways everybody. I, don't, I can't. I can't even remember who I was there with. I just remember I was at the game. We was all the way at the top of the stadium, and you know, just to see that that kickoff. You know, that was that was crazy. Appreciate you, man. Good luck. Appreciate you. If you've got a question for Brandon, uh, raise your hand and I'll unmute you. Hi, Brandon. Jairbrick saves from 80.7 FM WRHU. There's various guys who will be making their first Super Bowl appearance along like yourself. Who has been the biggest influence in the locker room for the team uh, as you all are making it to the stage? I mean, just, you know, the team, like the players, you know, just seeing ever since I got here, just seeing how hard and how dedicated everybody and everybody's, you know, in L.A., you know, I've been on a couple of teams and it's just like L.A., everybody just buy into, you know, what the goal is. And the goal is, you know, to win a, you know, the Super Bowl. And it's just seeing how focused the guys are every week, everybody, you know, the line, basically like coach don't really have to, you know, do too much coaching. He put in a game plan, but the players, they take ownership here. And it's like everybody, they make sure everybody knows what to do. Everybody's on there. Cooper Cup, he's, I'll just say Cooper Cup is really like one of the main reasons why I was like, you know, I'm, I just look at him and every day he put his head down, just go to work. And it's like, he don't really say too much. He just, he work. And it's like, that's somebody that, you know, you just try to stay close to as you, you, you're preparing for this big game. And it's like, you just see what he does on Sunday, but you don't really see what he do on you know, during the week, and I get to see that, and it's like, man, look, he's out here performing every Sunday, you know, the best receiver in the game right now, and it's like, that's just somebody that I'm, you know, I look, I don't even have to talk to him, you know, just looking at him, look how he approaches day every day, that's just somebody that, you know, that I talk to, well, I don't talk to, but just looking at him, you know, that's how I prepare myself, because I'm not really a big talker either, so it's just, I'd rather go work and, you know, just try to get ready for this game. Justin, did you have a question? All right, if that, anybody's got a question, feel free to raise your hand. Yeah, Brandon, one thing I forgot to ask you before is uh, obviously you're not alone out here with former Lions. You have Matthew Stafford, Sean Robinson. How much, uh, how neat is it to be able to be on the field with a couple of your old teammates since you're, all three of you guys are really looking for your first Super Bowl coming from Detroit out to L.A.? Thank you. Oh, yeah, it's a, it's a crazy feeling just to see how everything works out in the NFL. You know, you go from a team like Detroit that, I don't know, haven't been to the playoffs since I was born. And then to come, you know, see those guys over here in L.A., you know, there were great players in Detroit and they just came over here to help a, a great team and to see, you know, everybody, you know, winning. It's like, you know, that's always a great feeling. You always root for the players, you know. I mean, being an underdog, I always root for the, the, the players that have never, you know, been to a Super Bowl or, you know, was on a losing team. So it's a great feeling to be, you know, in this position with those guys being where we were three years ago.
If you have a question, please raise your hand. Quick question for you. Was there a particular game this season that you guys thought you could make it all the way to the Super Bowl in your own backyard? And what has this whole week been like for you? I don't think it, it was – I'll say the, the 49ers game was the last game, the, the only game this year that, you know, me personally – you know, nobody here really we – we never really was worried about, you know, where the Super Bowl will be, where, you know, who will play. But it was just like after the, the 49ers game when it was like, man, we get to stay home and play in the Super Bowl, I feel like that was a game that hit everybody. That was like, man, that's crazy. Like it's actually we home field – in the Super Bowl, the biggest game of the year is like, man, that was, that's probably the game that we realized that it was, you know, it was about to be a great feeling. And a follow-up, this season, were there any defenses you were going against resembled anything that the Cincinnati Bengals will be showing at you guys on Sunday? I mean, every, it's the NFL. They got great players over there. Every team we played, you know, had great players and, you know, this is a smart team, their defense, you know, they do, they, everybody do their assignment and it's just going to be one of those games where you got to, whoever executes the best will be, you know, victorious in the end. And I'll just say every team we played this year been a, you know, has been practice for this game because every team, you know, we've played some great defenses so far and it's just, it's another great defense that we get to see this Sunday coming up and it's, you know, just got to go out there and execute. If you have a question, please raise your hand. Hey, Brian, this is Jake from Sideline Sports. How you doing? How you doing? Man? Good. Um, so you've returned some punts this year and obviously some kicks, as well as playing wide receiver. You've done a, a couple of things. Uh, and apparently Coach Sean McVay today uh, brought in a lefty punter, I heard, to try and simulate uh, what you're going to see with the Bengals over the weekend. Do you feel like that kind of preparation is really what's going to lead to you guys winning, you know, not not leaving any stone unturned? I mean, it's the reason why the Rams are in the Super Bowl. So it's, it's like you just prepare if you catch them from a left foot. If a, you're facing a left foot punter and we don't have a left foot punter, you bring one in. And that's just something that, you know, the Rams do a good job of. And it's which, why, which is why our special teams go out there and we're, you know, we're always ready for whatever is thrown at us. So they just do a great job here of preparing us. You know, Johnny's a great punter, but he's a right footer. And I'd rather catch from a left foot because that's what I'll see on Sunday. So. You know, they just do a great job here of making sure we're prepared. We see everything that we're going to see on Sunday. Hey, Brandon. Um, just wanted to go back to that Jacksonville game, the opening kickoff that you took 65 yards. What did that do for you? Just, to, um, you know, your first touch of the season for the Rams, like having that kind of impact on, on, on that kickoff return. Yeah, man, I ball that. That game ball that, you know, from that game was – you know, that's, that's one that I'll keep around, you know, for a while. That's one that I'll tell my kids about because it's like, man, you 
was just home, you know, not too long ago, sitting on your couch, not knowing where you'll be. And then the first time you touch the ball in a, in a, in a, in a game that you're, you know, you have a big return and help your team, you know, give your team a little spark. You know, that was just, you know, that was a return. That was just, that was, that was a good day for me. That's all I'll say about that. And I mean, just to follow up, I mean, you know, you get this opportunity and I'm sure you're, you're you know, the night before you're thinking about that, that Jacksonville game, like, oh, hopefully I get a chance to to take one back. Did you even dream about having that type of return on your first touch? Like that would seem to me to be like beyond your wildest dreams. Yeah, man. I'm, I mean, you always, you go into every game, like, man, I want a big return, right? You try to watch film, try to figure out, you know, the weak links, the little, you know, where their weak spots at. But it's like, man, once that ball is in the air, it's like, it's just like, man, run. That's all, that's all it really comes to my head. It's like, find a hole, run, hit the hole. And that's really all I did. And it was just like, man, you couldn't have been set up any better. You, if you watch the play over with the 10 guys out there, everybody made their block. Nobody, you know, everybody had a block. And it was just an easy lane for me to run. And it was like, I, I give all the props to, you know, the 10 guys that have been out there, you know, since I stepped foot on the field. They had been busting their butts, making sure, you know, they did their jobs and which makes the returns easy for me. So, you know, I'm thankful to have those 10 guys and Coach Jody and Coach Stutes, you know, putting the plan together. And then just one more for me, we're, we're just talking to, to Johnny Hecker and just sort of asked him, you know, the, the Rams special teams have really improved over the second half of the season. It's really aligned with you, you know, sort of showing up. And he mentioned specifically that, like, getting you back there, returning kicks really instilled confidence in the whole group overall. Just what has it been like to be able to carve out the role that you have and, you know, to, to have the type of impact on this special teams unit over, over your time with the Rams the second half of the season? Man, it's a great feeling. I mean, the first day I got here, Johnny was kicking the ball to the moon, and I, so it was a hard time for me catching it. But, you know, just thankful that, you know, I had a punter like Johnny, you know, to go out there before practice, during practice, and get some extra catches in, learn how to, you know, how the ball spin and, you know, get the feeling. Because, you know, being home for, you know, a month, you can't, you're not seeing people like Johnny Hacker on the street or whatever. The jugs don't punt the ball like Johnny. So it's like, you know, just having him when I first got here, man, it was like, man, he's the one of the best punters in the league. If you catch his ball, you catch any ball. And, you know, talking to him and Matt, and then, you know, they they all, the specialists, every punt return, you can watch it. They're out there. Let's go, BP. They're, they're hyping you up. Your teammates, the 10 guys out there blocking for you, they believe in you. And it's like, I mean, that's really why, you know, my role has been the way it was because it's like those 10 guys out there, they just make it easy for me. And I just tell them, let me catch the ball and we can make something happen. And they, they make it happen and we all, we, we make big plays together. So that's all it's been since I stepped foot on the field. That's all I got. Thanks a lot, Brandon. No problem. Um, Brandon, I was uh, listening to a lot of the other reporters. Do you ever get many reps at the wide receivers at all? And Coach uh, Yarber, because Coach Yarber to me is quite an individual, the way he his energy rubs off on his players. And, you know, I didn't know if you ever got any wide receiver reps or what you've learned from Coach Yarber. Thank you. Uh, you know, I, I learn every day. I, you know, you got three great receivers. You got Van. You know, when I got here, it was Robert Woods here. You know, that's, you know, I, I, I wish I could, you know, see him more. But, you know, it sucks that he had the injury that he had. But, you know, just watching the guys, you know, that that's in from the Cooper Cup, Van Jefferson, Odell, it's like those, I just take mental reps, just watch them. You know, I sit in the meetings, yards, he's a great coach. You know, we go over film, he give you ways, you know, to get open. And those are my my reps. And I try to take mental reps by watching those guys. And then when I go on scout team, you know, go against Jalen Ramsey and Darius Williams, it's like, those are my reps in practice for me. Cause it's like, I mean, I'm a pump returner. So, I mean, I'm, I'll wait my day. Whenever my day comes, I'll be ready to play on offense. But, you know, my reps are just the mental reps I get from, you know, listening to yards and practice or listening to them in meetings, coaching the guys. And, you know, those are my, my reps that I've been getting. And I'm thankful to have those reps because I've learned a lot since I've been here. Hi, can you hear me? Oh, yeah, I can hear you. Uh, Rocco Law, WRHU, New York. Uh, quick question here. You know, everyone's been talking about the uh, Cooper Cup and o OB OBJ combo, but also people t forget about Van Jefferson and yourself. You think there's any advantages to, you know, um, so much focus 
focus on them on the defensive side for the Bengals right now that they're trying to come, with, come up with and uh, try and shut you guys down on, on Sunday? I mean, how, how do you stop it? You got Super Cooper, you got Odell out there, and you got Van. It's like, man, it's really whoever Stafford wants to throw the ball to. All three of those guys can win. Like, I don't care what anybody say. I mean, it's proven. Like, those three guys can get open whenever they want to. So, it's – I mean, it's – It'll be tough for any defense. I mean, whoever we was playing against, it'll be tough for them. And, you know, they we've been showing it, you know, week in and week out. And it's just a reason why we're in this position that we're in today because we got, you know, a dangerous offense with those three guys out there. Hey, Brandon, Stu Jackson with therams.com. What's this opportunity meant to you? Um, I know when we talked to you when you had the big game against uh, the Jaguars and I think later in the season um, when the road games as well, um, you know, you mentioned how, you know, there was some uncertainty at some point, um, I think maybe in the fall when you were back in Florida. So to be go from that point now to you know, playing in a Super Bowl, what is that? What is this opportunity? What is that journey meant to you? I mean, so it's really hard for me to explain right now because it's like I'm trying to, you know, I'm approaching my week like it's a normal game week, you know, trying not to get, you know, caught up in the moment. But, you know, like I said earlier, I'm a thousand percent. I'll probably be crying pregame. So, you know, it's just been a long journey, you know, and it's, you know, to be in this position, you know, being the Super Bowls, you know, I try not to think about it a lot because it, it gets you pumped too. Pumped. I don't want to get, you know, it's too early right now. I'd rather hit peak on Sunday, you know, get ready for that game. But it's it's going to be a real emotional day, but it's, I'm going to be happy. You know, whatever the outcome is, I'm just, you know, happy to be in this position that I'm in today. Stu, did you have a follow-up? Uh, no, I did not, but thank you for asking. Thanks, Brandon. Appreciate it. No problem. All right, we have Brandon for three more minutes. If you have a question, please uh, raise your hand and I'll mute you. Hello, Brandon, congratulations. Appreciate it, thank you. Well, I just wanna just ask you a question. How have you overcome adversity? I'm sure in your career, you've had someone say, well, you can't do this. You can't do that. How do you block out the naysayers and just focus on you and your craft? I mean, those, those, that, that month I was home, you know, I, you know, met a good friend that put me into, you know, reading books, you know, self-improvement books, financial books. And it's just like, you know, the main thing I got from, you know, reading a couple books, a couple of the first books that I read was, you know, basically just focus on you, do what you, you know, whatever you, you feel is best for yourself. And, you know, I felt like, you know, if I want to play football, the, the best, the thing that got me here to this point, to this day was, you know, hard work. And that's basically how you beat adversity. How I'm, I'm you know, I continue to beat adversity, just work. You know, somebody tell you, you can't do something, I appreciate you, thank you. But watch this, I'm gonna go out here and work. I'm gonna do exactly what you told me I couldn't do. And if I can't do it that day, I'm gonna go learn it. I'm gonna go work at it every day. And I'm just gonna prove you wrong. That's just been my mindset, you know, ever since I stepped foot in LA and, you know, I had that wake up call being home for that month. You know, it's just, you know, put my head down and go work. You know, it's, you can learn whatever you want to, you can do whatever you want to do if you put your mind to it. And that's just what I'll tell, you know, all the younger athletes out there. You know, somebody tell you you can't do anything or, you know, you're too small or you're too slow. Just go put the work in and they'll tell you something. But, you know, I mean, it really doesn't matter. Put the work in, show them you can do it and you can do whatever you want to do.